Hi, I'm uh, Jamie Court. I'm the president of Consumer Watchdog. Uh, for those of you uh, listening and want to watch on Periscope, uh, go to our Twitter account. Consumer WD. Consumer WD, at Consumer WD, and you can watch the press conference. Uh, we're here today uh, because there is a um, terrible gouging of the consumer going on in the state of California. We've been talking about it since February. Since February, when ExxonMobil's Torrance refinery exploded, Californians have been paying over a dollar more than the rest of America for their gasoline. This is 10% of the state's gasoline supply. And ExxonMobil, after this explosion, has been running at 20% capacity. You want to just put a picture of ExxonMobil, this is what it looks like? The, this is a picture of what happened in the wake of the explosion in February. Californians have paid over $6 billion more for their gas than U.S. drivers since this explosion in February. One refinery of the state's 11 that make gasoline have created a price crisis and a supply crisis in the state, according to the industry, that is without compare. Now, we've shown at Consumer Watchdog that um, oil refiners have manipulated inventories and uh, jacked up prices through many market manipulations. But make no mistake, the excuse they always give is Exxon Torrance. Exxon Torrance is the poster child for why we need more information about what goes on at refineries, why we need to open the books to the public and the smaller players in the oil market so that we have good information about when refineries go down, why they're going to come up, and why they uh, had problems in the first place. ExxonMobil is a black box. It's dangerous for the community. It's dangerous for the consumers of this state who should be enjoying record low crude prices, but instead are paying in many places in L.A. County still close to $4 a gallon. In a couple of places over $4 a gallon. Around the rest of the nation, gas is going towards $2 a gallon. So the Golden State gouge was made possible because of an explosion at ExxonMobil. Today, we are going to talk about that explosion and information we've received from multiple sources in the industry about what went on at Exxon Torrance. And we're going to put together what we think is a picture of negligence by Exxon Mobil that led to this explosion. We are uh, fortunate to be joined not only by our consumer watchdog team, uh, Cody Rosenfield and Lisa Tucker, but also on the line by uh, an oil industry expert, um, Bob Vanderbach, who's going to talk to us via Skype. And Bob has been watching this industry for 50 years, and he's going to explain what that explosion meant to the market and why that explosion, based on the information we have, happened. But today, we're announcing, um, based on information from multiple sources in this industry, uh, that we have found not only that ExxonMobil is covering up what's going on uh, at the Torrance refinery by refusing to answer subpoenas from federal regulators, but also that they have, uh, according to information we've received, hidden from regulators and investigators a key employee who has information about this explosion. In this letter, we've asked Governor Brown, U.S. Attorney uh, General Loretta Lynch, California Attorney General Kamala Harris, and we've CC'd the U.S. Attorneys for California, and we've asked them to interview this individual who we've named in the letter uh, who is the head of uh, the light oil processing uh, unit uh, that exp where, where this key um, explosion occurred. We've redacted the name for the purposes of this press conference to protect his identity publicly, but we have shared it with these state and federal officials, and we're hoping they will interview him. ExxonMobil, in the last few weeks, has refused to answer subpoenas uh, by uh, federal officials. They've refused to answer questions about uh, that reluctance to congressmen and congresswomen in Washington, D.C., namely uh, Maxine Waters and Ted Lieu, who wrote on September 11th asking why Exxon wasn't answering subpoenas. They've now, according to information we have, 
apparently have hidden the identity of a key employee by moving him to an administrative post so that investigators would not know about his whereabouts. California Penal Code 387 says that if a corporate manager knows about dangers in the workplace and doesn't come forward about it, they can go to jail. They can go to jail. I'm confident that the Attorney General, the California Attorney General of the United States are going to take this letter seriously because if the information in it leads to information of a uh, managerial cover-up, that means that all the managers at Exxon who knew about this information and this informant and didn't produce him or it could go to jail. And it is criminal what happened at ExxonMobil, not just for the community, but for the state of California's consumers. This negligence at this refinery that we're going to describe right now to you has led to Californians paying gas prices that are higher than have ever been paid in the state before. We've paid as much as $1.50 more for our gasoline than U.S. drivers this year because of this explosion. Previously, the highest difference between U.S. and California gas prices were 80, was 80 cents. Typically, it's 20 cents. So this explosion single-handedly cost Californians about $250 each extra for their gas. Californians deserve answers, and we're going to lay out for you uh, what we think happened in ExxonMobil that was negligent on Exxon's point and what now needs to happen in order to get these answers for the public and to hold those accountable who have uh, potentially misrepresented the situation to investigators. So first I'm going to bring on uh, our researcher Cody Rosenfield to run through what unit exploded in, uh, in, in uh, Torrance and what we think went wrong. Thank you, Jamie. I'm Cody Rosenfield. I'm a researcher here. I'm going to talk briefly about the explosion that happened on February 18th at Exxon's facility in Torrance. As you can see here in this graphic, we point out the cracking unit, which is the fluid catalytic cracker. And what it does is it takes really heavy oil and it turns it into more profitable products like gasoline. So it's very important in the process of refining. And what happened on that, that day was Exxon had to make repairs on the FCC, their cracking unit. And they decided that instead of shutting that unit all the way down, instead they would keep it partially running. And this turned out to be a catastrophic mistake, both for the California oil market and for employees there who were actually injured in the explosion. Um, and what happened was they kept it running, they began doing their, their maintenance, and unfortunately a line filled up with fumes and it led to an explosion. And of course, for... Cal OSHA has now fined them because for nine years they had a pressure gauge that was broken that would have told the people that there was too much pressure in the system. So not only is there historical negligence such as that, but also this we need to speak to these employees so we get the full picture and we understand why Exxon decided that they needed to keep the, the FCC running at all when it was putting people in danger and, and their equipment in danger. Uh, and I'm going to now Hand it over to Lisa Tucker, who will explain a little bit about the toxic ingredients that are used at the refinery. Unfortunately, um, we had a leak of uh, hydrofluoric acid at that refinery on September 6th, uh, which does not instill confidence in the company, and it really shows a pattern of endangering workers and the larger community. Fortunately, it wasn't a huge leak, but the problem, uh, again, demonstrates Exxon's negligence. Uh, there's a line that runs from delivery trucks bringing in hydrofluoric acid to the alkylation unit uh, that stores it. And there was a small leak on it, and the, the pipe was clamped off as a temporary fix. But in all the months that those units have been down and emptied in order to be able to be cleaned and maintained and fixed, uh, that leak was never actually permanently fixed. And so that was why the leak occurred. I guess there was just a small fault in that line that was um, shaky and the clamp didn't hold. Uh, moreover, um, the company did not uh, follow safety procedures. They didn't notify the fire department. Uh, I think they emailed them, but waited about six hours to make a phone call uh, to the fire department to tell them. The fire department considers this a very serious infraction. 
Um, so, you know, they, they, again, they just aren't being a good corporate actor in the community right now. Um, the threat, let me just talk briefly about the hydrofluoric um, acid. Um, ExxonMobil uses something called modified hydrofluoric acid. Uh, there's another um, component also used by refineries, sulfuric acid. Uh, and that's what the refineries use here. However, many refineries have switched away from the hydrofluoric acid, uh, two-thirds in the, in the country have, and Exxon is only one of two refineries still using it uh, in the state of California. Um, it's modified now, which means that it reduces the volatility of this gas, but the threat is still very substantial. Uh, in a large release, uh, what happens is uh, dense clouds form low to the ground, and depending on wind conditions, they can be carried as far as 25 miles away. Uh, and we need to be extremely concerned about this because we have a very uh, densely populated area where that refinery is. Uh, this stuff um, leads to very serious burns of everything, your eyes, your nose, your lungs, and everything else, but it's also a poison. So once it enters your body, it can wreak havoc with all of your internal organs, and if it's a large enough amount, it can kill you. So this is not something that we need to take lightly. Um, it's unfortunately not the first time Exxon has had a problem like this. Um, back in the later 80s, they released 100 pounds of hydrofluoric acid not in its modified form, and it took the city a lawsuit to get them to use the modified form of it. Um, I guess I just want to say that there are other catalysts that they can switch to. Um, they're called solid or liquid ionic catalysts. They've been piloted, they are in production, and they work, but they cost more money. And so we need to get these refineries to understand that it's not okay, it's too big a risk to risk lives for the sake of their profits. And they need to start refurbishing and switching to safer alternatives. Let's, um, uh, let's, let's pause, have Bob. Let's, pa let's pause for a second. Uh, let this ca last camera set up yeah. and give them a second to get set up. So let me just, uh, while that's happening, uh, recap one uh, important piece here, which is um, the cracking unit, which hap uh, the accident which happened there on February 18th, Feb uh, which is separate from the accident that just happened last week no, in six. September September 6th. Uh, the pattern of here between these two incidents is a failure to disclose all information to the community and to uh, law enforcement in a timely way and be forthcoming about what's happening at these refineries. Uh, and that's why we bring up the continuing danger to the community and the continuing danger to the market. If Exxon's allowed to continue to hide from the public key facts about these accidents. Uh, the accidents happen, but cover-ups should never happen. And what we're talking about here appears to be a pattern and practice of covering up significant, significant issues. Um, the, uh, the issue that uh, our next uh, speaker is going to talk to uh, and, you know, is what happened in that cracking unit. The information we've gotten about this individual uh, who was in charge of that operation is that this unit was being run uh, way too hard, way too long, and should have been shut down earlier. But for that negligence, this explosion probably never would have occurred. The workers wouldn't have been injured. The community wouldn't have been endangered, and the gas market wouldn't have suffered the consequences of a six billion dollar bill. And Californians are paying six billion dollars because Exxon wasn't on top of its maintenance and wasn't uh, following uh, safety protocols and wasn't uh, uh, shutting down its facilities uh, when it was the right time to shut them down. So to speak to that, we're going to, uh, through the magic of Skype, bring on Bob Vandervoch, who's the senior editor of the Bakken Oil Business Journal, as well as an independent consultant in the petroleum industry. He's got 50 years of experience in wholesale and retail gasoline and lubricants in the industry. He's been a trader, and he's going to talk exactly about what ExxonMobil means to the market, to the community. And, and what he believes uh, is, is wrong here, and he was uh, also, uh, for the first time in a while, I've seen mentioned in today's LA Times story on this issue. So we're very glad he's with us, willing to speak publicly about the problem, because often people in the industry 
uh, aren't able to, and we're very proud that pa Bob was uh, consenting to come and talk a little about it from a trader's point of view today. Well, hold on a second. Okay. Let me get some uh, sound on Bob. Yes. So Thank Bob, you. you're on. Thank, Thank you. Jamie. Let's see if we uh, can see it you. It was the uh, electrostatic precipitator, or ESP unit, that actually blew up. The FCC is uh, the fluid catalytic cracker unit at Exxon Mobil Torres Refinery is in perfect condition and could be run today if they were able to reinstate the old ESP or electrostatic precipitator. Uh, that's where they were going uh, on with the meeting initially set up for September 2nd, which was then delayed by Exxon Mobil uh, to do some more paperwork and they had the indication they would be given uh, approval by the uh, South Coast Air Quality Management District as soon as the 9th and they were putting it out to the uh, public uh, through their uh, spokesperson uh, that they would be back up in operation uh, in a limited capacity about 60 percent by the end of September. This caused uh, the trading the spot market that we deal here in California to react by canceling or not scheduling cargoes that had been coming in on a regular basis. We had at least 12 of those cargoes coming in during August and as you noticed the price of gasoline in LA has definitely dropped. And at this point uh, we only have one more cargo coming in in the early part of October because of the talk that they were going to be able to get it back up and going on uh, by no later than the end of September. Well, uh, when the hydro, when the uh, hydrofluoric uh, acid leak happened on September 6th and was not reported in a timely manner, the fire, de the Torrance Fire Department called them out on it, and then of course the South Coast Air Quality Management District put the kibosh on any further talks and canceled their September 17th meeting. And as of Monday, they have taken down all workers from uh, putting the ducting in between the FCC and the old ESP. And they're now going for just reinstating and refurbishing the new ESP that's been in service for five years. Bob, Bob can, now, you ex can you explain, pricing? Can you explain pricing. technically, just for a second before we go to pricing, yeah. what the ESP does? and why uh, there's some evidence that it was being, uh, it, it should have been taken offline along with the cracker a little early, after some earlier incidents, uh, potentially in order to avoid what could have, what would later resulted in the explosion. Well, the incident didn't just happen on the morning of the 18th. It actually started the afternoon of the 16th of February when a compressor went down. That's inside the housing that also contains other units besides the FCC. But it connects to the FCC and is very vital to keeping the FCC running. That, that compressor uh, had a broken part, let's keep it simple. And uh, in order to repair it, they would have had to shut down the FCC completely. The, uh, and I'll just make sure, the light oil processing leader, uh, the general in charge, decided not to turn the FCC off and thereby caused hydrocarbon fumes to go into a tube, into what we can compare to in a car as the catalytic muffler that handles the fumes and actually turns the, uh, the gases, the exhaust fumes coming off the FCC into a product. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a cement, uh, loose cement type product that's used uh, in the aftermarket. But having said that, our business, and I've been in the industry for over 55 years, believe it or not, <laughs> including 20 years with a major oil company, uh, in including doing pricing uh, for uh, service stations on the retail side for four years in their head office. And having said that, we're an oligopoly. We look at each other every day, and we uh, price according to what the market will bear and across the street from where we do business. And when anything happens to a refinery that is going to impair supply, that automatically puts the, uh, the equation back to having the price go up. Uh, having been in the business as long as I have, I had not seen pricing uh, as 
happened in this case. Uh, we had var uh, variations of 60 cents a gallon in one day. It happened on July the 8th uh, when two of the major oil companies actually cornered what's known as the spot market, including the major oil company in California, and left all the other traders uh, begging for no product, and that immediately affected your price on the street. Uh, we had, a, for instance, we had a refinery yesterday, uh, the, Tos the Tesoro Carson refinery, it also it used to be the Arco refinery, or BP, had a hiccup yesterday, had an electrical shortage, a breaker go off, and the uh, spot market immediately reacted with a 14 cent increase. Can, can I ask you, Bob, I'm sorry to you, but uh, do, do you think that the news now that uh that the, that that Exxon Torrent's going to be on offline till next year is going to drive up uh, prices in, in LA. What's your prediction? Well, my forecast is I don't have an eight ball. I don't predict. I forecast that there are going to be price decreases between now and the early twelfth at the end of this year. Only because we also have uh, another anomaly that happens uh, this time of the year, which is we switch to a high read vapor pressure gasoline, which puts more supply into the market. That offsets some of the shortages. But that refinery was putting out 100,000 barrels a day of gasoline. That's 4.5 million gallons. And the shortage, uh, of course, affected us immediately because on February the 15th, we switched to summer blend, which automatically reduces supply. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah we just lost your picture for a second. People who worked uh, in and around the refinery who uh, were uh, very surprised at the continuing uh, recalcitrance of the company and uh, at the, uh, at the uh, move here. Um, so before we close off, we've got Bob back, which is good. Can he speak? Uh, we're going to let Bob, uh, Bob close off. So, Bob... Uh, Bob, maybe in closing, you could just tell us what, what, what you think this all means. I mean, I, what I said was gas prices were going to drop anyway, but they're probably not going to drop, drop as far and as fast. But why don't you tell us what you think, you know, in, in a minute or two, uh, th these events and, and what we've learned about Exxon's um, not being completely forthcoming could mean uh, for California and the market. Well, uh, Southern California especially, because Northern California is, has not been affected as much. Uh, all the, the price gouging that's been happening, and I'll call it that, because the price difference between what's known as dealer tank wagon, which is the price branded stations pay to major oil companies, and the unbranded rack price that we're paying is about 40 cents. So they're getting 40 cents a gallon from the service station operator, the owner, uh, beyond what uh, Costco, let's say, is paying currently. And they've been doing it since uh, May. And it's going to continue until February, so we have at least that much in the uh, the works uh, that's uh, going to be uh, gained. It's a good day and a good time to be in the refining business in Southern California. Yeah, the, the profits are sky high for the refiners, and, uh, and they're going to be, not be able to hide it at the end of this quarter like they couldn't at the end of the, the second quarter. And it's all been on the back of the consumers in Southern California. We've seen, uh, by the way, the largest second quarter profits ever for Tesoro, our second largest refiner, the largest first half of the year profits for Chevron, the largest refiner in the state, Valero, had an 1,100% increase in the profits, and these profit reports are now going to be available in the beginning of October, right? So do we have any questions for Bob or uh, anybody at Consumer Watchdog? What did the sources tell you again? Well, again, uh, what we've heard from people in and around the refinery is that uh, in addition to defying subpoenas uh, from federal regulators, that Exxon is uh, hiding a key employee from investigators. And this key employee, who we've named in this letter today, is someone who has information about what really happened and what the company, uh, what the company could or should have done previous to this explosion in order to avert it. Um, Hiding a witness or hiding an employee with material knowledge to an investigation is a serious, serious issue. Uh, if you're uh, involved in the federal or state investigation in California, it's more serious than any other state. So we've given this to law enforcement as well as the governor who's controlling uh, Cal OSHA, uh, which has already come up with some findings in this investigation and fined uh, Exxon for uh, 
for failing to fix equipment. And what's the gist of what the employee is saying? Well, we, we have not talked to this employee, but the what we understand is that this employee who was ahead of the light crude processing unit that that uh, that uh, Bob was talking about uh, as key in this 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 issue was was the employee who failed to throw the switch early enough after the initial problem and shut the unit down and that led to the explosion. Uh, we don't know that. We have just heard that and that's why we're protecting the employee's name from public uh, light but we are giving it to uh, uh, government officials who have the power to investigate and get to the bottom of this and we believe that um, this isn't someone who should be a fall guy for these problems. We know we need to know what he knows and we need to know why the, co why the company moved him out of uh, this unit uh, where he would have been asked questions to an administrative job where he uh, apparently was not asked questions by regulators. And we need to know, they need to know he exists and they need to interview him and find out what he knows. I know you just recently sent the letter off to the governor. To the, the yeah. Any kind of response yet? Oh, no, but we sent off pretty late, late last night. Late last night. Uh, um, but we, uh, uh, you know, there are, uh, unfortunately, it's a government holiday today, I think. The government holiday? Mm -hmm. Jewish holiday. Jewish holiday. Well, then the Attorney General's office is open, and I think I encourage you to, <laughs> I encourage you to actually call them and check. Uh, I, I would call, I encourage you to check with the California Attorney General that's already said they were investigating other issues uh, involving um, uh, the shorting of the market, and I, I can't imagine they won't look. And we've also sent it to U.S. attorneys who should be working today. There's one uh, who, from ILA, Eileen Decker, and uh, the governor, I think his office should be uh, very interested in this, and so should Cal OSHA. Bob, do you have any other thing, anything you want to say? Anything else, sir? Yeah, I'm not only campaign to uh, uh, destroy the oil industry. I think we're very vital to, uh, you know, keeping the uh, economy going. It's just that, uh, as you said at the beginning of your introduction, we need to be uh, more open and uh, about uh, issues that, or things that happen. Uh, glitches at these refineries that turn into uh, debacles and, and sometimes are passed along in, uh, in price increases without warning. It seems that we have the old uh, prices shoot up like a rocket and drift down like a feather, and that's exactly what's happening today. And I thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Bob. We appreciate you talking out this morning and coming and join us. Take care. Right. Okay, thank you. Anybody else with Thanks any so questions? Much. Thanks so much.